Hello, this is Father Randy Sly with another installment of Day by Day, where each day we take a look at a reading from Holy Scripture found in the Daily Mass. And today is Thursday of the eighth week in Ordinary Time. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. As Jesus was leaving Jericho with his disciples and a sizable crowd, Bartimaeus, a blind man, son of Timaeus, sat by the roadside begging. On hearing that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, son of David, have pity on me. And many rebuked him, telling him to be silent. But he kept calling out all the more, Son of David, have pity on me. Jesus stopped and said, Call him. So they called the blind man, saying to him, Take courage, get up, he is calling you. He threw aside his cloak, sprang up, and came to Jesus. Jesus said to him in reply, What do you want me to do for you? The blind man replied to him, Master, I want to see. Jesus told him, Go your way. Your faith has saved you. Immediately he received his sight and followed him on the way. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. In this uh, passage about blind Martimaeus, and by the way, the healing of a blind man uh, actually occurs in all three of the synoptic Gospels at this point. In Matthew, there are actually two blind men. In Mark and Luke, they only point to the one. And there's uh, a, a pretty good evidence that probably the reason they singled this man out is that he was a man that everybody knew. Uh, it, in fact, they called it twice, Bartimaeus, a blind man, the son of Timaeus. Well, Bartimaeus actually means son of Timaeus. So he was probably known uh, in that area. But there's another little nuance that, that's kind of fun to think about. Here in Mark, it says, as he was leaving Jericho, Matthew says the same thing. In Luke, it says, as he was approaching Jericho. And that had people scratching their heads for quite a while until uh, the uh, archaeological excavations in that area uncovered an interesting nuance, and that is that there were actually two Jerichos there. There was the old Jericho, which is the ruins and the ancient city that we hear about in the Old Testament. And that Jericho, as you remember, the walls came tumbling down, as they say, and there was still activity in that area. There was also a new Jericho, right next door, Jericho built by Herod. Rather than building on the top of what had already uh, been there, he built it right next to it. So there are actually two gates, one going out of old Jericho and another one going into new Jericho, or the other way, going out of new Jericho and into old Jericho. And it would be very likely that Bartimaeus would place himself right there at the intersection of the two gates, a place of maximum exposure for people coming and going. And so here is Bartimaeus, and I, I just really want you to get a sense of what is going on in uh, the dynamics here. And it just you, if you want to just uh, do this, you can, you don't have to, but if you just close your eyes, and just think about being blind Bartimaeus, and you're there uh, in that area where people are coming and going uh, from Jericho. A lot of things are happening. People are passing by, and you can't see a thing. And yet you hear news. You hear people saying that Jesus is going to be coming by. And really, at no point... Do you have an idea when Jesus is there? Uh, you're calling out into the darkness. You're calling out into a crowd of people, and you don't know who really might be there. And so um, when he heard that Jesus of Nazareth was passing by, he just began to cry out, 
Jesus, son of David, have pity on me. And they started to rebuke him, telling him to be silent. But he kept on calling it out. He, he, he had no idea where Jesus might be. And if he had already passed by, or if he was still coming, or if he was right in front of him, he had no idea since he was blind. But he kept calling out all the more. Well, Jesus stopped and, and said, call him. So at this point, those around that were trying to stop him went over and encouraged him, hey, take courage, get up. You know, uh, Jesus is calling you. And um, what an amazing thing for this blind man for, uh, to hear someone speaking directly to him, get up, he's calling for you. And so he'd been calling out in desperation, knowing that of anyone around, that Jesus would be the one to have pity on him. And it was interesting is that he was there as a beggar. And so calling out, son of David, have pity on me. What does that mean? What would that mean to Jesus? That's why Jesus asks him the question, what do you want me to do for you? Because it could be Bartimaeus saying, I know that you have a lot of influence. Can you tell everybody to give me money? I need money to live on. Jesus did not know what Bartimaeus wanted him to do. Actually, he knew in his heart, but he wanted Bartimaeus to explain it to him with his lips. And so the blind man replied, Master, I want to see. It was not about money. It was not about having, you know, luxury or anything like that. It was having that one basic thing that had been he had been deprived of to have it return to him, his sight. And so Jesus told him, go your way, your faith has saved you. What an interesting phrase. Go away, your faith has saved you. By calling out into the darkness, Bartimaeus was not only going to be given the gift of sight, but his faith in the fact that Jesus was able to do that exceeding abundant thing that is impossible, that is for sight to be returned. But he had the faith to believe that Jesus could do that, that that showed his faith in who Jesus really was. So not only did he have his sight restored, but he found himself again restored in his heart to a unique relationship with God. And I love this. He received his sight. What does he do? He follows him. Now, interestingly, his discipleship doesn't have longevity. As Bartimaeus joins in the journey, Jesus is entering Jerusalem for his final week. But Bartimaeus, the blind man, was able to see the triumphal entry and all the ways in which Jesus would be ministering and working with those who are around. How wonderful to think that when the uh, disciples and the many, you know, at one point, the Acts of the Apostles says there's 120 in the upper room. I want to think that Bartimaeus was among them. The one that received his sight in Jericho was now there awaiting and encountering the power of the Holy Spirit. It's fully within the context of what we see here in Jesus having a new disciple, a new follower, that perhaps he stayed with the other disciples in the upper room and continued his walk of faith. So may the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts together be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. One really pr a good practical illustration from this is that many of us may not be blind, but we may go through periods of darkness. We may find some periods of darkness in a number of ways, either uh, circumstances in our life, challenges, health issues, whatever it is. 
but in our darkness, in those dark times, just call out. Call out to Jesus. Now, the word pity I don't like. It's, it's not the right word. It's, it's a word that kind of means feeling sorry for, at least in modern language. But what really is here is have mercy on me. Give me what I do not deserve, but what you lovingly can offer. And that is grace. And so in your darkness, if you're in a dark time, call out to him and invite him to bring mercy, to bring grace into your life. So may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.